Additive synthesis is probably one of the most underrated synthesis techniques out there. And in this video, I'm kind of diving in and showing how I like to use it and why. Um, yeah, let's do it. I would say the coolest thing about additive synthesis is that it's super easy to use and you have a lot of control over the sounds you're creating. And I find that especially helpful or nice when it comes to creating bass sounds because we all know that when we're later mixing and EQing and trying to make kick and bass working nicely together, uh, that that can be pretty tough. And also to get your sub basses and this kind of stuff on point. And I feel that Additive synthesis is actually a way that you can create your bass sounds from scratch and then also fine tune them in a way that they just work very well in your tracks. So I usually like to use operator, but for this video, I'm actually gonna be using Serum because it has a nice big interface that we can look at. And I'm just gonna add some attack and release so we don't give, uh, get any clicks. But before I jump into depth of how all of this works and why exactly I find it so nice, let's maybe just do a quick demo of what we can do with additive synthesis. So if we uh, click on this pencil, we get to draw in a custom waveform. So now we would just have a sub. And now I'm gonna start adding harmonics. So as you can hear, of course, they all sound a bit similar because that was just like a quick demo, but um, you can really do anything from like a low powerful sub bass to an electric bass to like an organ kind of bass. And so basically let me explain the interface real quick so you understand what's happening here. In additive synthesis, you just pick single frequencies or sine waves and combine them together to a sound. And usually you have an interface like this interface where you can just decide which harmonic of a fundamental frequency you want to add to your sound. So let's say we have our fundamental frequency here of 100 hertz, then you will always have multiples of that on top. So you would have 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300, uh, 400, 500 and so on. And um, same goes if you play a different note, of course, that you always have the multiples on top. So if I were to draw in more of these overtones, you would see that we move closer and closer to a sawtooth wave because that's just the overtone structure of a sawtooth wave. And if, for example, I removed every other uh, harmonic, you will see that we get closer and closer to something, if I draw this in a bit better, you will see that we get closer and closer to something like a saw, uh, like a square wave. Okay, but this is obviously tough to get this exactly. But we don't want to use saw waves or square waves exactly because we have some options in here which we just don't have with other synthesis techniques. For example, in subtractive synthesis, we have a filter and we filter frequencies away from a waveform. So you always have a slope and always have some of the higher harmonics coming through in a certain way. And there are not many filter uh, synthesizers with a very, very steep filter. In additive synthesis, on the other hand, we can add a certain amount of harmonics and then just stop and not add any more overtones, which would kind of be like an infinitely steep filter. And the advantage of this can be that, first of all, it sounds kind of cool and interesting. And second of all, if we have a certain pocket in our mix that we want our bass to be strong, but then on top we have some stuff happening from Rhodes pianos or something like that, and we want the bass to stop, this can be a very cool way to get a stable bass sound, which really nicely fits in there. And then we can even decide for each harmonic, be like, oh, actually I have a percussion conga or something which is playing at this spe uh, specific frequency or in that range i'm gonna remove some of that uh, of that specific harmonic in my bass sound same goes for sub bass usually it's tough like you get a sine wave you distort it a bit or uh, use a, a sawtooth wave and filter it quite a bit but it can always sound a bit bloated and weird and here you can actually pick how you want the overtone structure to be and give it a certain character and make it more audible in your mix. So if you say, well, I don't hear my bass enough, you don't have to distort it a lot. You can just add some more 
of those overtones and also make kind of find a texture in a sound that works nicely in your track by just doing subtle changes and seeing how different it sounds if you add a specific uh, harmonic or re remove it. For example, like that. Also, if you already have a pretty subby kick and you want a kind of a, a low bass, you can say, well, I'm actually going to put more energy into the second harmonic and remove some of that sub. And all of a sudden you get a, a sub bass, which is more um, leaning towards the slightly higher bass area. Yeah, and what we, you will notice is that if you play around with these overtones, you can also add some higher harmonics to just add a little different dimension to your sound. And if you play around with these different things, you will realize how small, small subtle changes can really customize your bass in a way that it works well. Um, in your sound. Of course, you can also create a waveform. If you want something that's a bit more dynamic and there's a bit more motion in there, you can obviously create a waveform of your liking and then use a filter on top of that. But before I keep talking even more, I would highly recommend to you to just grab a drum beat or whatever or check one of your projects out and maybe try to build a additive bass sound into that because it's really, I think it's just a cool technique to have up your sleeve. <laughs> I hope you found this interesting and helpful. If not, let me know in the comments or also if you have any questions. And I hope to see you around soon. Peace. Mm -hmm.